On to the main part of the show. The part that everyone's looking forward to. Particularly Jack, I feel. Oh, yeah. Culture swap. Swap my culture. Where we will be reading erotic fan fiction. That we have written. Now... And possibly other people. Mark made a very good point when I was discussing this idea with him. Did he say he's going to turn it off at this point because he feels disgusted and sick? No, no. Here's the thing. Um, I feel like a lot of people are excited for this, in all honesty. Um, When I first... You know, as as people who watch the exclusive clip that went on our YouTube channel recently, they'll know that you weren't the biggest fan of this idea. Yep. So, you know, before I um, kind of... Before I pitched it on the show, I asked a few people what they thought, and um, I, was, I was saying to Mark, and he said he thought it was a good idea, but he was saying the only issue is, obviously, with fan fiction, it should be from fans. To which yeah. point, I counted... I don't think there's a bigger fan of the show than me and you. Well, you, definitely. And I don't think you're a fan of the show. I think you're a fan of yourself. Well, I mean... I think I'm a fan of the show. You're well, a fan of Liam. No, because Liam wouldn't be so good without Jack there. The the long-suffering, you know, put-upon partner in crime. Right. Right? I'm glad I'm the sidekick. I wouldn't say sidekick. I'd say antagonist. <laughs> <laughs> to our dashing hero. Of course. <laughs> Trying to yeah, ruin all right, his Yeah, alright, I get... Yeah, so Mark said, yeah, fans, yeah. you think you're the biggest fan or we're the biggest fans. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that means it is fan fiction, right? I guess. Yeah, sure. Perfect. I like the fact that, I like that he wasn't worried about the you were writing erotica about yourself. No, no, just that we weren't fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, God. All right, so we're yeah. going to start with my story. And I've written this as a bit of a script. So there's there's parts for me to read out and there's a part for Jack to read out. Are you excited, Jack? No. What we'll do is, once we've finished reading this, there'll be a section for critique. Yep. Okay? Okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? Sure. This is Jack and Liam's Sexy Story, Part 1, A Sexy Story, by Liam. Liam's phone began to ring. With mild-mannered frustration, he wearily looked at who was calling. It was Jack. Yo, Liam. How's it going, buddy? You busy? Um, kinda... Liam replied with a hesitation that Jack couldn't help but notice. For fuck's sake, put the flesh tube down. I need your help. It's called a fleshlight, actually. But fine. What is it? I got a reply. Liam stiffened and then slowly released his grip on the fleshlight. With a quiet deliberation, he pulled up his trousers and pants. I'll be right there. With not a single consideration for himself or his unfinished task at hand, Liam rushed to meet Jack at his house, for he knew how important this moment was. Jack had been searching for the one for a while now, but she was an elusive creature. However, it appeared she had finally made contact. Jack stood before Liam with an undeniable rugged handsomeness. His unkempt beard was a sight to behold, and while some might describe his eyes as beady, Liam wasn't sure he agreed with such an assessment. His body defied description. Jesus, how did you get here so fast? I didn't finish. I didn't need to know that. Anyway, look. Look at what she said. Jack handed Liam his phone, and with nimble fingers, Liam flicked to the latest trendy dating app, Nerds in nerds. Jack's profile was a magnificent sight to behold, with many a heroic pose and just the one scantily clad teasing picture. Many a lady had been enraptured, but only the one mattered. Liam tapped on the envelope icon and opened the top message. It was a voice message. A seductive, sultry voice read, You have been chosen. Meet me at beep. Bring a beep. Beep alone. And don't be beep. A robotic voice declared, end of message. Liam looked at the phone quizzically. What does that mean? Well, mate, I think it means you're in there. In where? Where do I meet her? What do I bring? What, alone? Don't be what? I don't understand, Liam. I just, I just beep. Jack was close to malfunctioning, and it was down to Liam to pull him back from the brink with some carefully chosen words. Jack, you can't just beep. Well, I don't know what else to do. It's all right, buddy. We can work this out together. First, we've got to figure out where she wants to meet you. And I got an idea. Jack's eyes filled with hope, and Liam smiled a wry smile. Together they ventured into the world, and it wasn't long before a horrible realisation dawned on Jack. Oh no, you're not taking me there. Liam, please, tell me you're not taking me where I think you're taking me. Well now, that entirely depends on where you think I'm taking you. If we end up at East High School, I swear to God. It's fine. It's the first weekend of the month, and you know what that means. No, Liam. No, I do not. Well... On the first weekend of the month, all of the graduates return for a sing-along and, um... 
Sorry, under what? The important thing to remember is they are all over the age of 18. As Liam said those words, the dynamic duo rounded a corner to bear witness to an unbelievable sight. There, in the East High School car park, was a large white sign that read, Annual Monthly Orgy Now Taking Place. Below the sign was a mass of writhing bodies, flesh pressed into flesh, soft moans and looks of pure ecstasy. It was hard to tell where one person ended and another began. Liam's eyes widened, Jack's closed. And then, in a hauntingly beautiful way, the participants' voices arose in unison. We're all in this together. Make it stop. But Liam couldn't make it stop. He was feeling himself being inexplicably drawn closer and closer. He moved, trance-like, closer to the bodies, arms reached with grasping hands, looking for another to join their party. Liam took a solemn look behind, just in time to see Jack open his eyes. Wordlessly, he mouthed, help me. With a steely resolve, Jack plunged forward and grabbed Liam before the nearest outstretched hand could clasp his belt buckle. I'm going to get you out of here. No, leave me be. This is where I must be. Jack noticed that Liam wasn't behaving like himself. Well, he was, but his eyes had a slight gaze to them that he didn't recognise. No, there was definitely some trickery at work here and Jack was determined to get to the bottom of it and also figure out the mysterious message left by the one. But with a mighty push, Liam shoved Jack out of the way and then found himself quickly enveloped by hands and arms and legs and feet and other body parts too numerous to list. As hands grasped at Liam's clothes, pulling them from his body, a voice flashed into Liam's mind. It sounded like it was coming from a great distance, but was instantly recognisable as the voice from Jack's voice message. Meet me at the dungeon. Suddenly, Liam felt strong hands grab his ankles as he felt himself being pulled out and away from the orgy. It was Jack, a look of wild panic in his eyes. I got you, buddy. Jack pulled again, extricating Liam from the hot, sticky mess. Unfortunately, Liam's shirt was ripped from his torso and quickly submerged into the heaving pile of bodies. Jack escorted Liam to the home of a nearby friend, Dan Palmer. Liam was still pretty unresponsive, occasionally grasping feebly at the air, quietly murmuring, I've got to be breaking free so I can bop to the top and find what I've been looking for, the start of something new when there was me and you, if only I could get your head in the game. Liam then busted out a sweet dance move. Dan looked worried. He'd seen this before. It was a truly tragic affliction that only had one cure. Luckily, he knew exactly who could help. Jack, 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 Jack. My boy, you need to take Liam to the third will. It's a pub. The landlady should be able to assist, and I, I would cover him up. Dan handed Jack a blanket which he wrapped around Liam. Without further ado, Jack took the poorly Liam as instructed, where he was greeted by Cat Fison. She was not unfamiliar with this curse. Hold his nose and pour this liquid down his throat. It will hurt like hell, but he'll be alright in a few minutes. Goddamn nasty affliction, this. I don't understand. What's wrong with him? Oh, he thinks he's Zac Efron. Don't worry, get this medicine in him and he'll be as right as rain. Jack did as he was told, and the next few minutes were a nail-biter. Would Liam be okay? One minute, ticked into two, then into three, and Liam was looking no better. Shit, I thought that would work. You need Mark Dawes for this. Only he can help you now. With that, Liam burst into one more magnificent dance move and then collapsed onto the floor. Jack tried to shake him awake to no avail. Hurry, you're running out of time! Jack heroically slung Liam over one shoulder and rushed as fast as his little legs could carry him. Eventually, he found himself on the doorstep of one Mr Mark Dawes. Fuck! Zach Ephronitis again! Jack nodded solemnly. Why bother? Liam is a three-star friend. He's not worth me using my magic. Please, Mark. Please, I... A lump forms in Jack's throat. I need his help. Don't worry, man. I got this. Quick as a flash, Mark leant over Liam and placed a light, gentle kiss upon his lips. Liam's eyes shot open and darted around frantically. What happened? You thought you were Zac Efron again. Probably tried to get stuck into an orgy, I'd wager. I saved you. Thanks, pal. I'm real sorry. Last thing I remember was hearing your voice message. And next thing I know, here I am. You don't remember the orgy? There was an orgy? Where? Never where. Liam, can you help me find out where to meet the one? We've got to figure out the four beeps. At this, Mark's ears pricked up. Did I hear you were looking for the one? Yeah, she left a message. Here, let me get it. No! Don't play it! What? Why? It's a trap! It was a message which tricked Liam into thinking he was Zac Efron. I don't even want to think what it might do to me with my magic healing powers. Good point. Liam sat silently, deep in thought. Jack looked at Liam with worry. He'll be alright. He just needs human interaction. With a great sigh, Jack sat by Liam and put an arm over his shoulders. You alright? 
Liam slowly began to speak. Jack, when you said we got to figure out the four beeps, what did you mean? The voice message had critical information obscured by beeps, don't you remember? Liam looked Jack dead in the eye. I remember, in the orgy, I heard the one, I heard her clear and without a beep. Realisation slowly dawned on Jack. Wait a second, does that mean... I know where she wants to meet you. The terrific twosome waved goodbye to Mark and rushed with reckless abandon to the dungeon, but found their way barred by a rather angry-looking dwarf. Grrr! Who goes there? Make way, for it is I, Jack Kempster. And me, Liam Underwood. And in this episode, we'll be going inside this here dungeon of yours, thank you. Jack Kempster? Liam Underwood? What kind of names are those? I spit on you! And with that, the dwarf did indeed do a big spit, but he missed and it fell to the ground. Well then, what's your name? Me? Well, my name is Carlos. Liam felt his stomach drop. No, that can't be right. You what? You can't be called Carlos. I am, and I own this here dungeon. Now be gone before I get violent. I'm sorry, but you can't be a dwarf called Carlos. Carlos was growing visibly enraged. And why? Pray tell. Can I not be called Carlos? That's a stupid name for a dwarf. Are you calling me mother stupid? I'll have you know she was right... Whoa there! I don't think he was insulting your mother. I think what Jack was trying to say is that Carlos doesn't sound like the name of someone who owns a dungeon. It sounds too... fantastical. Now you listen here, you little shits. I am the dungeon master in real life. And if you want to get past me, you got to do something for me. Jack rolls his eyes. Carlos shows him nothing but contempt. Fine, what we got to do... Carlos turns his full attention to Liam. Remove your blanket, boy. Let me see what you got. Liam shrugged his blanket off and stood in front of Carlos. I see. I see. Now. Carlos licks his lips. Take off your jeans. Really? You want to get in? You gotta prove your worth. Reluctantly, Liam slips his shoes off and wiggles his jeans down and stands before Carlos in his boxers and his socks. It's cold. Tell me, laddie. Can you fight? Well, no, not really. Excellent. Bring me bubbles! The old wooden door behind Carlos slowly creaks open, and there stands the most hideous sight Liam has ever seen. It is a fishman, completely naked and grasping the spear. Here, take my axe. I think you'll need it. He chuckles to himself, and then declares, Liam and the Spartan fish! Only one may win, the other will not be going to an empty bed tonight. Jack and Liam share a wide glance. Suddenly, with much force, the fishman strikes. Liam luckily manages to roll out of the way. He mostly just slipped in his socks, but he manages to style it out. With a great display of strength, he swings the axe, epically missing the fishman, but sinking it deep into Carlos's skull. The fishman's eyes bulge wide. You killed him! My saviour! The fishman drops his spear and embraces Liam, and then scoops up Liam's jeans from the floor. I take these, yes? Proof of what happened here! I'd rather, you know... Keep them. Blub blub, no mine. And with that, the fishman ran away. Well, that's just great. You need clothes. Yep. I'm uncomfortable continuing until you find clothes. Liam looks at the steel body of Carlos and has an idea. What may have been trousers to the dwarf now look like hot pants on Liam, but it's the best he can do. I preferred it when you were in just your boxes. Tough. Let us push on. The dungeon is dimly lit, which is not great for Liam, as he struggles to see in low light, but he's aware his friend needs him, so he continues forward. So, Jack, have you thought about what you'll do when you meet the one? Well, I, um, I, you see, I think maybe I'll, I'll kiss her, I think, and I, um, uh... Jack stutters and stammers and gets in a muddle. Just a kiss? How about some adventures in the bedroom? Well, sure, if that's what she wants. Deeper and deeper they go into the dungeon, when all of a sudden they hear a cry for help. It's her. It's the one. Without another thought, Jack rushes into the darkness, quickly followed by Liam. Eventually, they emerge in a large cavern... Walls adorned with flaming torches. There, tied up, is the one. She is beautiful. Help me, quick, before he returns. But it's too late. Already a large shadow is dancing over the wall, looming larger as a dark figure grows closer. The cavern erupts in golden light, and there before Jack stands something clad in white with a large hat. No, it can't be. Yes, it is I. But I... I killed you. The figure chuckles menacingly. (laughs) Killed me? Ha! You can't kill the Archbishop of Banterbury! The one howls in fear. Jack looks to Liam, and Liam gives a nod. They know what time it is. 
they bump fists and simultaneously say, Nerd on nerd, nerd. Activate. activate. With that, Liam leaps onto Jack's back as Jack charges the Archbishop of Banterbury. Clearly, he was not expecting such a bold move, and they managed to catch him by surprise. Liam kicks the Archbishop in the face, and he cries out in pain, Ah! I'll get you for this! In retaliation, the Archbishop swings his mighty bishop stick at Liam, knocking him from Jack's back. Liam crashes to the floor. Jack stands upright and snarls, You don't fuck with nerd on nerd. In a frenzy, Jack rushes towards the Archbishop, but he's not fast enough. The Archbishop strikes hard and fast, punching Jack in the balls. Jack falls to his knees and vomits, certain at least one testicle is crushed. Ha! 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 You can't defeat me! The one is mine! And now, you will be too. The Archbishop peels off his bishop cloak and stands before Jack, naked and surprisingly hairless. Good! You are kneeling before me! Now! The Archbishop turns around. Show some respect and kiss my ring. Never. Fueled by the rage of a thousand arguments, Jack balls his hand into a fist and punches the Archbishop with a fury never before seen in this world. His fist penetrates and then keeps travelling forward as Jack sinks deeper and deeper into the Archbishop. The Archbishop's eyes bulge as he understands he has been defeated. His mouth opens to protest, but only a gurgle falls out, quickly followed by Jack's clenched fist. Skewered on his arm like a disgusting kebab, life escapes the Archbishop and he goes limp. Jack removes his arm and collapses on the floor, his testicle hurting. Liam calls over. Help me! I'm not a doctor. I am! Untie me! Liam rushes over to the one and unties her. Thank you, Liam! She gives him a quick peck on the cheek and then runs to Jack's aid. Here, drink this! With a wave of a magical hand, she conjures a steaming hot potion. I... I hate hot drinks. Me too! Oh! The one waves her magical hand again and the... The one waves her magical hand again and the potion is suddenly icy cool. Jack gulps it down, and before he knows it, his testicle is restored to its former glory. No, it feels even better than ever. All of Jack tingles. Thank you. Jack climbs to his feet, but the one pounces on him and kisses his face all over. My hero! Wait a second, wait a second. Jack clears his throat. (laughs) Jack's got stuff he wants to say. Everyone stop and listen. Liam looks at Jack as the one stops kissing his face. I have travelled a great deal today and seen many things, but I wouldn't be here without you. Jack looks at Liam. You, my friend, helped me. Words cannot express my feelings. We joined forces and proved that we were stronger together. We activated the power of Nerd on Nerd and I think it's safe to say we lived up to our name. You are so beautiful to me. We did it, didn't we? It maybe took us a year, but look where we are now. We did it. And we did it together, as a team, with mutual appreciation. And now, I got the girl. You got your flashlight. Come, let us celebrate right here. And right now. Jack begins removing his clothes, much to the one's delight. Liam, quite uncomfortable at this, begins to leave. As he exits, he hears, My! How big! I am not ashamed of my body. Damn right too! Now remember, the safe word is banana. Start with just the tip. As Liam leaves the dungeon, he counts quietly to himself. There are soft moans coming from the chamber. One second. Two seconds. Three seconds. The moans begin to grow louder. Four seconds. Five seconds. Six seconds. The one screams out in joy. Seven seconds. Eight seconds. Nine seconds. The screams grow louder and faster. Ten seconds. Eleven seconds. Ooh, banana, 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 banana. The end. Question mark. So, that was Jack and Liam's sexy story. Part one, a sexy story by Liam. Very good, Liam. Now it's time for critiques. That was super good. I don't know what I can critique. It was really good. <laughs> Do you see why it had to be lengthier than we wanted? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Cool. The thing is, I tried to fit in every episode title I could. I noticed. But a couple aren't in there. Ooh, so, it's a bonus. Which ones were missing? Exactly. If you think you know the answer, let us know. I'm very impressed, Liam. You did a good job. <laughs> you don't know how much that pains me to say. That wasn't too sexy for you, was it? No, that was fine. Okay, good. Because I know, you know, there was a lot of discussion. You didn't want to... I mean, there was... You didn't want to be in it, and you didn't want to have weird sex stuff happen in it, and... Well, I did end up fisting an archbishop, so... That wasn't sex, though. <laughs> no. True. I mean, you know, and he was evil, so you did a good thing there. That's true. That's true, Liam. Yeah. You did a good job. Thanks. Stop I, milking I... it. <laughs> no, as long as you enjoyed it, that's all that matters. I did. It made me chuckle. It made me laugh. Perfect. 
it sort of puts my one to shame now. Um, <laughs> Will I react with equal mirth? No, uh, probably not. So that was your one, Liam. That was very impressive. You've sort of blown mine out of the water. Okay. Well, that wasn't my intention. No, you did it. It just shows how much um, I care about the show and having a good episode. I think it does. That's true. Now, so I'll so listeners, if you enjoyed that, or if you want to let us know how Liam's sexy story, how it made was, you feel, yep, you know, let us know. Uh, I haven't titled mine. Okay, so untitled. So this one's an untitled piece of work by Jack Kemster. It's also not a script. I didn't do a script. I did a story. So this, there's no parts for me. I just have to sit and listen. You're in it, but yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You you will have to sit and listen. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. If you can deal with that, I can. I can definitely try. I'm also going to do maybe less voices than you did. Okay. This is untitled by Jack Kempster. Mister Kempster, I have Zach Efron on the line. Should I patch him through to your office? Sasha's voice said over the intercom. No, Sasha. Tell him I'm in a meeting. I replied throwing a piece of scrunched up paper towards the hoop positioned over my bin. He probably wants to invite us to another party, I said, turning to Liam. Doesn't he have any other friends? Oh, come on, Jack, a party with Zeph Dog? That sounds exactly like the kind of wacky hijinks which could end in some sort of erotic situation which would make for the perfect premise for this erotic fanfic, my co-host said from his slightly smaller desk in the corner. Liam, how many times do I have to tell you I don't want to be stuck in some boring, mundane, erotic novella? I chanced to look out of the corner of my eye to see how impressed he was with my use of the word novella. The frown indicated not much. Dude, what could be better? Now that we're a trillion pound empire and the number one rated comedy podcast in the world, what's left to us but to explore sexual fiction? I snorted and poured a glass of pure golden Dr Pepper into my champagne glass. You know that this story is going to end in sex, right? You're going to try so hard not to get there, then right at the end, boom, sex. No sooner had the words left his lips than the intercom buzzed again. Mr. Kempster, there's a distressed woman in reception saying only Kempster and Underwood investigations can solve her husband's murder. Liam smirked. See, told you. I fucking knew we should never have started a private investigation business on the side, I angrily muttered. Fine, Sasha. Send her in. Moments later, the beautiful young widow entered. I rolled my eyes as I took in the long black dress, the cigarette in one hand in one of those stupid holders, and the legs up to here. She sat down at my desk, crossing her legs in a seductive manner. Mr. Kempster, you're the only one who can solve my husband's murder. Her voice sounded exactly like the sound of church bells on a rainy day. I picked up my phone and dialed in a number. Yes, Sergeant, it's uh, Jack here. Yep, I'm in the office. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, sexy lady with the whole solve my husband's murder shtick. Obviously, there's meant to be some scene where we make love, then at the end I find out she's the killer. Yeah, send a couple of officers down here. She'll be waiting in reception. Liam shook his head in disapproval. Oh, come on, mate, it was obvious, right? Yeah, but you don't have to be a spoil sport about it. I... what? said the lady. Oh, sorry, forgot you were there. Yeah, if you don't mind waiting in reception and maybe next time do something less... noir? Um, right, okay, said the lady, getting up and leaving. I turned to the small crab on my desk and started tying its bow tie. No one wants to hear some shit about us sitting in this incredible office dressing up a crab for a dinner party that may or may not be part of the overarching narrative, Liam moaned, kicking his diamond bin over. People want to hear sexy stories about sexy people. Liam, if you want to go and get in a sexy side story, you're more than welcome. I need to get Mr. Crabbington ready. He hasn't even prepared a speech yet. I laughed in a what-can-you-do kind of way. The intercom buzzed. Sasha, I swear to God... If this isn't about Mr. Crabbington's very important dinner, I'm going to flip out. Apologies, Mr. Kempster, said a heavily accented voice. I believe you and your sidekick, Liam immediately scowled, are going to need to make alternate evening plans. Your secretary, Sasha, is currently being driven to a secret location. If you don't pay us a billion pounds, we will execute her. It's another plot, Herc, I whispered to Liam. I rescue her. Then in gratitude she falls into my arms. Oh, you have until midnight, gentlemen. The intercom cut off. Ugh, fine, I said, grudgingly getting out of my synthetic eel skin chair. Grab your gear, Liam. I guess we're doing an action story. Finally, Liam shouted, fist punching the air. Jarvis, our chauffeur, drove us straight to the biggest abandoned warehouse in the city. Couldn't we have done some, like, investigations or something? Liam whined from the back seat. I mean, yes, obviously the very generic Russian villains took her here, but it kind of defeats the point if we just skip all the story. 
See the shit I have to put up with? I asked Mr. Crabbington, chuckling at the jaunty angle he had his top hat on. Stop trying to get the crab into the fucking story, Liam yelled. I quickly covered Mr. Crabbington's ear holes and shot a filthy look at my co-host. I'm going to pretend you didn't insult him and assume that it's just you being stressed. Now let's go save the secretary. Dot, dot, dot. I pushed open the door to the luxurious office hidden deep in the warehouse. Oh, for fuck's sake, Jack, we just skipped all the cool action scenes. I'm sure they were very cool, Liam, but I can't waste words describing gunfights. I need to fit Mr. Crabbington's dinner in here, and honestly, I don't care about shootouts. I gently wiped some blood off of Mr. Crabbington's monocle. Fine, whatever, just please go and get to the sex scene. I turned into the room I opened a few lines ago, and took a sharp breath. My eyes took in the scene, but my brain couldn't process it. No, it... it can't be, I whispered. Oh, for fuck's sake, Liam said from behind me as he leant over my shoulder and saw. I'll be waiting in the fucking car, he said, storming off. Mr. Kempster, we knew you would come, the obvious Russian henchman said from next to the ornate chair at the desk. And you brought your sidekick, Mr. Crabbington. I'm not even the sidekick or whatever, I heard Liam yell from the hallway. I should have seen this coming, I said, locking eyes with the person sitting in the chair. Mrs. Crabbington, you were a traitor the whole time. (laughs) Mrs. Crabbington blew some bubbles out of her mouth. Don't you dare try to convince us this was for the greater good, I screamed at her. Mr. Crabbington loved you. Mr. Crabbington also blew some bubbles. How could you betray us like this? I went for my gun, but the Russian henchman was a hair faster. As his shot fired, I squeezed the trigger. I dropped to the floor. I saw a tiny shape dive from my top pocket. In adrenaline fueled slow motion, I saw as Mr. Crabbington dove into the path of the bullet. The henchman's head disintegrated as my bullet tore through him, and the bullet meant for me collided with my best crab friend. I slowly stood up and pointed my gun at Mrs. Crabbington. Do you see what you've done? You'll rot in jail for this. He was a good crab. A single tear rolled down my cheek. A day later I stood in the rain. Liam and Sasha on either side of me. I watched as the Viking longboat drifted out to sea and once it was far enough out I lit the arrow and drew back the bow. I let it fly and watched as the burning dot flew out and hit the ship. You earned your place in Valhalla, my brother, I said as the flames consumed the ship. Sasha attempted to hold my arm, but I pushed her away gently. No, Sasha, I can never love again, I said, turning and walking into the grey rain. This story is shit, I heard Liam say from behind me. <laughs> the end. Wow. That, that's, that was an emotional roller coaster. I know. I mean, I didn't think I'd be so invested in Mr. Covington. He's my favourite character in the story. Yeah, understandably so. I feel like we need um, a mascot. Exactly, and I think Mr. Crabbington could be that. I have some questions. Go on, then. Maybe critiques, if you will. Okay. Where was the eroticism? There was a sexy crab blowing bubbles at another sexy crab. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, what I did, Liam, was I wrote an erotic fan fiction, but with the premise that your character, Liam... Yeah. Wanted it to be a sexy fan fiction. Yeah, like, I, I understand. And my and character, I appreciate Jack the, didn't do that. Yeah, I understood and appreciate the kind of the meta ness of it all. Um, but I, I just like my only critique is I feel like there was some sex missing. Mm, I don't know. I think I think that was sexy. Okay. Well, maybe our our listeners could tweet us and let us know uh, one which story they they like the best. Well, it's yours. Yours is the best story. And two, no, that might not be true. Mine's more like a, mine's like a more meta narrative. Yeah, and I think people would appreciate that. So I think the second question they should answer is which story did they find the most arousing? Because that's the one I think I've got in the bag. Well, I don't know. Mrs. Crabbington was quite the character. She was a crab, though, right? So, I mean, I don't know if I missed it, but did, did you kind of explain how she looked at all? She's a crab, Liam. They yeah. all look pretty similar. <laughs> I mean, what's the difference between a male crab and a female crab? Mr. Crabbington had a top hat, a monocle, and a small bow tie. And what did Mrs. Crabbington have? I imagine she wore a pearl necklace and right. a small red dress. Now, these are these are facts that I feel like would have benefited the story. Well, the Mr. Crabbington facts were in there. Mrs. Crabbington, I admit, I underplayed her character slightly towards the end. I was rushed for words. I wasn't sure if it was like the, the sort of situation where you did like a brief template so the, the like reader, or in this case, listener could project their like ideal crab woman onto it exactly well that's you know that's part of it liam okay but yeah i i did like how meta it was yeah it was more that than anything else and i i did like the different genres we sort of um went through 
There were going to be more, but I was trying to keep mine under a thousand five hundred words. And uh, see, that was I a shrunk. limit that I yes, that you threw out the window. I'm glad you did because you got a good story out of it. Exactly. I didn't want to be um, shackled by such limitations. Yes. But guess what, Jack? Go on, Liam. You've had fun listening to my story, and I've had fun listening to your story. But we've had a couple of listeners send in their own stories. Now, that's true, we have. For Mr. Mark Dawes, who might be listening, you wanted fan fiction. This is fan fiction. Do you want to read Tom's and I'll read Amanda's? Yeah, I think we should do Amanda's first. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, our first submitted fan fiction, submitted by Amanda, who um, we discussed last week going through all of the shows for some reason. Yep. It's admirable. It's definitely, that is a good word to use. Um, First, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to submitting, for submitting this. I will be reading it. Doesn't have a title, but let's see how it goes. Jack begins driving to Portsmouth in his new car. Thanks to his lessons, he feels secure, but as he gets closer to Liam's house, he can't help but think about Liam's warnings about his GPS screen. Maybe Liam really does care. When Jack arrives for the barbecue... No one else is there yet. He knocks on the door and is shocked to hear the sounds of Attack on Titan coming from inside. Liam comes to the door and shyly ushers Jack inside. There are candles on every surface creating a magical setting, though also possibly a fire hazard. What is all this, Liam? asks Jack. It's our anniversary, Jack, and I wanted you to finally know how I feel. I know I give you a hard time, but it's because I love you and I want you to know that we're all in this together. Stop putting me on. You're just trying to make a High School Musical reference. No, Jack, it's true. This is all for you. You and my Zac Efron. Liam approaches Jack and tenderly takes Jack's bearded face in his hands. Let's do this. Why do you think I've been getting all those naughty comics? Jack is taken aback at first as they kiss, but gives in as the kiss deepens. They begin to undress each other as the gentle kiss becomes something more. Suddenly there's a noise at the door and Cat walks in. Yeah... I figured this would happen eventually, sighs Cat. Announcer voice. Cliffhanger! Tune in next time to see what happens with our heroes. And that's where it ends. How thrilling. What did you think of that then, Jack? It was... (laughs) It was good. Probably the most erotic story so far. I think Amanda wins on the erotic story part. Well, yours had an orgy in it. That's true, but... Amanda wins on the erotic story being about us. Yes. Yes. I... I... The thing that I, I think I've liked the most about all of these stories so far is how Zac Efron has had a part. <laughs> yeah, he's been in all three stories. Which I'm a huge fan of. You would be. And I like that um, Amanda has put quite a lot of references to, to our episodes in there. Yeah. So for those other dedicated listeners, hopefully you've spotted them. Uh, I have to say, I'm super impressed. And I, for one, can't wait to find out what happens next. <laughs> oh, God. I just hope we don't have to wait a year for the next one. Yeah, that's true. But wow, that's just wow. What, what do you have to say? Any, any extra you want to say to that? I'm sort of in a stunned silence. We've had another one, haven't we? We have had another. Uh, friend of the show, Tom Hogan. He's done art for us. He's our artiste extraordinaire. He has sent us in a story. Now, we've not read this, but we have seen the subject line, which says, original story, 100% not off of an online generator, which I'll admit makes me slightly suspicious. I'm excited to see what this original story is. Oh, same. I will be reading it. Your narrator will be Jack. A Chilling Day to Pound by Tom H. Jack stepped moistly out into the shit sunshine and admired Liam's nostril. Ah, he sighed. That's a erotic sight. Liam climbed off the microphone and walked violently across the grass to greet his lover. Jack patted Liam on the penis, and then tried to pound him abruptly, but without success. That's alright, Liam said. We can try again later. I'm just not horny, Jack said. Not as horny as the time we pounded on the desk. (laughs) Liam nodded damply. We were bland back in those days. Our ears were younger, and we had a lot more fun with them, Jack said. Everything seems bad and awful when you're young. Of course, Liam said. But now, we're less lame. We can still have fun, if we go about it loudly. Loudly? Jack said, but how? With this, Liam said, and held out a crappy headphone. Just take that with some water and in half an hour you'll be ready to pound. Jack swallowed the headphone at once and sure enough, 
In half an hour, they were able to pound loudly. They pounded with passion, like a man who loves his podcasting co-host, three times. And then the neighbour told them to get off his lawn. <laughs> wow. Oh, Wow. That was a struggle to read. Now, this this is the sort of erotic fan fiction that I've been waiting for. Because I, I feel like, uh, you know, with mine, I, I definitely had to tone down the sex because of your warnings. And with yours, there was none. And I felt like Amanda... Amanda's was a, a romance story. Yes, it was a romance. There was eroticism to it. This was just pure filth. Tom's is pure filth. This is pure pounding, loud there's, pounding. Yeah, there's sexy ears... <laughs> that might be my favourite line. Yeah, our ears, our were, ears younger, were younger, <laughs> and we had a lot more fun with them. I don't know what that means. No, everything seems bad and awful when you're young. Uh... So, also, okay. <laughs> also, Jack Pad Liam on the penis. <laughs> there's, there's just one bit I'm confused about. Okay. Yeah. So Liam climbs off the microphone and walks across <laughs> the grass to greet his lover. Yeah. Jack pats Liam on the penis <laughs> and then Jack tries to pound him abruptly but without success. So Liam says, that's alright, we can try again later. At which point Jack says, I'm just not horny. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. why is Jack patting Liam on the penis and trying to pound him abruptly if he's <laughs> not horny? Well, he's not. it's not that he's not horny, Liam, because the next line, not as horny as the time we pounded on the desk. I think Jack in this story is still horny. Right, just not horny enough. Just not as horny as the time they pounded on the desk. So I wonder what it was that um, meant that that pounding failed. Yeah, I guess. How do you pound without success? Like, could you could you not get it up? Well, exactly. Yeah, because then I swallow a microphone, and in half an hour we were ready to pound loudly. So this is a story about how you have erection problems. Yes, it sounds like it's a template story, which has had some words switched in instead of normal ones. I feel like it would be difficult to guess what those words were. Well, Jack stepped moistly. Yeah. <laughs> I think moistly might not have meant to be there. Yeah. I mean, walking violently across the grass. Yeah. Jack patted... Pa- pa- Why? That's an interesting one. Tom, let us know how you generated this story, because I'm genuinely interested. Well, it says it's not off of an online generator. It's an original story, so I'm assuming you just sorry. wrote it all. I'm an idiot. My bad, yeah. Tom. Yeah, exactly. Which, In which case... You know, I just wish there was there was another part coming. Five out of five. And five out of five for Amanda's. And five out of five for yours, Liam. And five out of five for yours, Jack. I think that was just a sympathy one, but sure. Yeah, sure. I, I didn't want you to feel left out. 4.5 out of five for mine. So now, right, I have to ask the most important question of the show. How do you think erotic fan fiction went? Better than it could have. Yeah? Yeah, I know what you're trying to do. Just, I'm just... What am I trying to do? You're, trying to, you're seeking for, like, me to say, oh, good job, Liam. I'm just no. Just you're desperate to, for my approval. Just want you to say, you know, uh, not as bad of an idea as you thought it was going to be. All right. Okay. Fair enough. I'll say it. It's not your usual shit show, Liam. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Oh Jesus. Well, I think that's probably all we've got time for, listeners, because this episode's going to have been a long one for you. <laughs> yeah, we do have um, one last thing to address. What are we doing next time? Next time we will be doing. A film that Liam loves, but that I have never seen. A little film called Stand By Me. I mean, it's not a little film. It's quite well known. Yeah. It's not like one of those little kind of independent films. It's not, it's not like a well, mumblecore. No. Otherwise, I wouldn't watch it. Well, you might have to one day. Oh, God. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be doing Stand By Me. Yeah. Are you excited? I am, yeah. I, it's one of those films that I've been meaning to do for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's one of my favourite films uh, of all time. It's probably in my top five, probably top three, top three. Fair so enough. that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, if you don't like it, it could spell troubles. Well, any future erotic fan fiction will just be us having a sexy falling out. I'd like to read that. You heard it here first. Jesus. Anyway, if you want to get in contact with us and let us know how you felt about the erotic fan fiction episode, how aroused were you? Let us know. If you want to write some erotic fan fiction, I'm sure we won't say no. I won't. So. The best way to get that to us is, you know, to email it to nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Yeah. Or if you want to just let us know how it went, tweet us at nerdonnerd. Yeah. Uh, you can also, you know, if you liked it, give us an iTunes rating. We would like them. Yeah, we we love them. And uh, if you want to watch some of our stuff, if you want to watch uh, me and Liam discuss the rules for this episode, 
Or you can, if, if you want to watch us go around Shocktoberfest. Yep, yeah, or you want to get our raw reactions to Shocktoberfest, you can go to our YouTube channel, and to get there, Liam, what do they type in? Uh, just type in Nerd on Nerd Fleshlight. That should get you there, right? I hope so. Hopefully. Um, the other thing, if you didn't want to faff around with that and you're listening on SoundCloud, I've updated our SoundCloud pr- profile so there's links to our Twitter, our YouTube, and also something that we very rarely talk about, our Facebook page. Oh, well, that's true, yeah, we do have a Facebook page. Yep, so go give that a like. Just, there's ways for you to get hold of us. If you want to get hold of us and let us know all these things, um, it's easy. We've made it easy for you. Apart from YouTube, it's a bit of a ball ache. But we just need you to subscribe and then it won't be a ball ache. Yeah, I think we just have to get like 20 subscribers, which is just double the amount we have, and then we can get our own little custom URL. Lovely. Yeah. Also, I just have one question. If uh, any of you have either during this episode or during a previous episode, masturbated while listening, we would love to know about that. I knew you were going to say that. Bye. Bye. Bye.